give um, uh, I mean here's I guess personality was uh, a little difficult but uh, I like his integrity and all that I respect him our tech our techniques completely different but except in one respect uh, how so you once told me that if you take a Clifford still painting and turn it 90 degrees Oh. <laughs> it's got like the three act movement or uh yeah yeah that's it's that's very accurate in fact he was an influence and i would mentally turn his paintings on or something. <laughs> and um and uh they're they're very very similar to sunset paintings too and a lot of that it's kind of uh it's it, i like what he did it's interesting Uh, Grant Wood. Yeah, I, I, I relate to Grant Wood. And it's, um, I've always liked his work. What I about guess. it do you like? Is it the texture, the uh, light? The con the... His contours are uh, yeah. gorgeous. Yep. Just the overall structure, uh, mm -hmm. the sense of color, uh, the humor in, in a lot of them, too. And, uh... Humor is something I see in your work. A lot, Warner. Uh, yeah. Well, Even a sense of the goofy at times, or the sense right. of informality, the sense of yeah. cuteness, like yeah. cute cartoonishness. Um, yeah, sure, there's elements of that. It's uh, probably left over from pop art or something. But uh, Frank, Frank used to say, uh, uh, art's too serious to take seriously. And I, took it, <laughs> I, took, I, took, I used to take it as sort of a zen... Thing, you know, and, uh, but that he said that a bunch of times. I think it guided his own work, and he could do some really dark, hideous paintings because he'd been in World War Two and seen bl a bloody, burnt mess. Now you're referring to another one of your teachers at Stanford, who Frank Lobdell. Oh, isn't that who we were talking about? Well, for before we were talking about Keith Boyle, and then oh, you, right, you just yeah. jumped to Frank Lobdell, who I think you had a just as close, if not closer, association with at Stanford. Right, yeah. He taught me a lot about light and things. And... What does he affect you as a colorist, by the way? Uh, he, uh, I, I asked him how to how did Rembrandt paint light and air, and he stayed after class till like six o'clock talking to me about it and brought out books and showed me how Rembrandt created light and uh, using complementary colors and uh, kind of the structuring. And uh, I learned a lot from that. Complementary colors and structuring. Are you talking about some colors recede and some come forward or? Uh, not really in light. It's more of a, a, a it's, it, it may, it, doesn't have a, a structure like that. It's more of a, a, a this uh, kind of a haze or things. But you can do it using complements too, with with all kinds of shapes. It's you don't have to be uh, literally like light, but it's often using complementary colors. And if you do it in just the right proportions, it works more effectively too. Anything else you could tell us about Frank Labdell or how he influenced you? Oh yeah, he was uh, a lot of integrity and rigorousness, and um, uh, a lot of his earlier work was very dark because he'd been through World War Two. Mm -hmm. And uh, but um, his later work got very light and playful and everything. That's it true. Yeah, it's some of the happiest work I've ever seen in right. modern art. <clears throat> Again, he was a great colorist too. I thought so. I yeah. just uh, the exuberance and the power and the confidence and the masculinity in the work. Right. Yeah. And later, the he was structuring color in a in a kind of really interesting way too. It was kind of atmospheric almost, but flat shapes. Flat shapes. Yeah. And Keith Boyle was working in flat shapes. Right, yeah. And you even said something about Keith Boyle had shapes coming in from the edges or the sides. Right. He had, a, lot, a lot of the California school did that, it, doing stuff along the edges and stuff. And, mm -hmm. um, poking down from above and below mm -hmm. and a lot.
lot of I use a lot of the same sort of devices sometimes. I have seen those Keith Boyle esque devices of those edges or those things poking in. Right. Yeah. He did a lot on the edges. Yes. Um, Maxfield Parish. Uh, yes. Uh, his work. I. Uh, it's his later work. Yeah. I mean, his posters are okay, but it was his later landscapes. I yes. Think they influenced me a lot, and it's. Uh, they're almost like a, I don't know, a parody of a Polaroid photograph or something. You see, it, there's some. I think he must have used photographs. That are, uh, we use compositing methods that are not unlike some of your right, methods. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love his work, the later work. Yeah. It's a kind of artificiality and a constructed right. quality. Yeah, I just like the structure, and it's yes. It may be because my father was an architect, but I just for me structures. Well, speaking of structure and composition, Cezanne. Yeah, I love Cezanne, and it's just uh, the, uh, the his structure of space. He used the edges a lot too. Yeah. But it's uh, the sort of uh, tactile space. It's, yep. It, you see it in his oil paintings, later oil paintings, that uh, that mm. kind of tactile space with his uh, thick skins of color. And yet he'd do watercolors that were just transparent, like stained glass. Too. Yes. Completely different. But uh, I've been interested in this, the, that kind of solidity of space. And, and it, it also he'd sort of um, compress space and expand it at the same time. By compressing it, uh, you can get a lot more in. And he seemed to do that a lot. And it's uh, kind of uh, structuring that I just found fascinating. He'd often work with the top edges and bottom edges and things, but that sort of structuring has always interested me. What Van Gogh? Oh, yeah, I love Van Gogh, sure. Yeah, that's, um, yeah. He's uh, more expressionistic than me, I think. Mm -hmm, um, but, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I love his work. I think of him as one of the most important colorists leading up to your use of color. Yeah, he's a really good colorist, yeah. El Greco, especially View of Toledo. Oh yeah, that was one of my favorite paintings. Uh, um, it's one of those few, it's a secular work, and it's yeah. just, I always loved that View of Toledo. It had a, a big effect on me. And it's, they're similar, our technique's very similar, I mean, very different, but uh, huh. I, I, I love the whole, I just love that painting. Yes, it reminds me of your work, even though it's like five or six hundred years old or something. There's always this <clears throat> rising cloud-like feeling, and these these skies, these clouds at the, in the back of the sky that fascinate me, mm -hmm. the recessive space space and all that kind of this upward motion through most of his work it's uh, very spiritual i guess yeah